Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so we're now going to have a question and answer session on a topic that I've struggled with right from the time I started working about 11 years ago. Um, it's about how to manage work-life balance. So I um, am known as a workaholic at my workplace, and it's not a good title to have. I thought it was really interesting when I just started work because I quite showed off about it until I realized I could go nine hours straight working without taking a single break. And it started affecting my health. At that time, I was young and single and lived alone, and it was OK. But um, in the long run, it wasn't. And I have I'm one of those rare cases where I had to leave my job because I enjoyed it too much. Uh, you don't come across too many like that. Um, a few years later, I joined another place of work where work was much lighter. And I recently got married. So situation changes again. Now I have more responsibilities. And I realize new struggles come up. So I, I thought I'm going to struggle with this, and I'm the only one. And then the survey responses came through, and I realized I have company. <laughs> so what, what I have here is the questions that came through on the survey. And uh, we have four lovely people who are going to help us answer these questions. I'm going to invite them to the front. So this afternoon, we have with us um, Asha and Ashok Tampi. If you all could come forward, please. We have John Philip and Rochelle Fernandez. Okay, while Rochelle comes up, um, we'll take a moment to just give them some time to introduce themselves to you very briefly. So, Ashok, could we start with you? If you could introduce yourself and then pass the mic time. I'm Ashok Tampi. I work at IIM Bangalore, uh, professor there in uh, finance. I have, uh, I'm married, my wife here, and uh, <laughs> uh, I have, we have two kids. Uh, son is in college, and my daughter is in school. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm Asha Tampi. And uh, I'm a freelance uh, creative designer. I work on UI as well as uh, the print media, you know, creating your brochures and uh, stuff like that, basic branding work. Um, I've been working for about 12 years on and off, but I mostly freelance. So sometimes I consult uh, exclusively for companies, but uh, mostly I work from home. Uh, I'm Rochelle, and uh, I work in the IT sector uh, with about 23 years of experience. I've uh, been married for 25 years, uh, been blessed with three beautiful daughters, uh, the eldest doing her master's and the second one uh, doing her bachelor's and the youngest being in class 11. Um, so that's a little bit about myself. Hi, I'm John. Uh, my I've been working for the last uh, 25 years, married, uh, two children, 16 and 13. Both uh, think they are older than me and more mature than me, which generally is a fact. And uh, I have been in the telecom sector for the past 25 years and worked with various companies, um, starting with the Tata Group. Then I've done, I've worked with uh, uh, Cisco, and right now, presently, I'm with, uh, I'm the director of sales for uh, South in a company called Avaya. And I'm sure most of you have not even heard of it. So you know the, so I'm going to do this because I'll just take a minute. Uh, all of you got your phones. Alexander Graham Bell made the first phone. So he started a company called Bell Labs. Then he started the company AT&T. AT&T split, Lucent, now Avaya. So I'm part of that company, sorry. And uh, that's my introduction. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, what I've done is I've, I've split the questions into three parts. So we'll first look at general questions that could be applicable to just about anyone. 
Um, the second section is for couples, so those managing married life and work. And the third one is to do with parenting, so balancing parenting and work life. So um, I'm going to read the first question. Now, of course, um, Giri's number is still active. So if you have any questions during the session, you could WhatsApp to it to him. If we have the time, we'll pick it up now. Otherwise, we'll send you the answers later. All right? So the first question um, that came through was, how can one balance work, family, hobbies, personal time, and sleep within 24 hours without getting stressed? How should one plan a sustainable personal and, and ministry schedules so it does not get affected by a change in work schedules? Um, I think, we'll, yeah, we have it up on the screen in case it was too long. <laughs> John, would you like to take that? Well, uh, I, I, the whole balance comes in when you know what is important for you, right? So the, the whole idea is that I, we firmly believe in routine in our, you know, at home. So you get up in the morning, you have the prayer time. Prayer time has to have your wife with you and the two children coming after they get in dressed and they come in and spend some time, right? Now, I'm not sure whether anybody realizes the importance. So during our morning one hour time that we talk, that's the time when uh, a lot of people say, don't bring your work home, right? But I'm, I do the opposite. I kind of tell my wife everything that went in the office, good or bad, and I show some of that. And then invariably, she tells me, you know what, probably you could have done like this. And she'll, and I, my wife always quotes scripture to me. I'm not very good at that, but she does to me. And that works. And the kids come and sit with us as well and watch that happening. When that happens, it brings in a routine. They go to school, we spend time with them. The thing I always tell everybody is, if you really can't finish your work in the nine hours that you're working, then there's something wrong. If you've not finished your work, get up a little early in the morning, four o'clock, get up, finish the work, and get it done. Most of the time, this works. And uh, I, 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 again, I'm saying this, but the most important thing of all of this is you've got to be ready to throw this at the feet of the Lord. I'm in sales here. Yeah. My life is supposed to be a pressure cooker. Seriously, you've got quotas every week. Then you've got to meet your quarterly numbers as well. And you get pulled up for that. So my wife keeps telling me, God's put you in the right place. You're in sales. There's no way you cannot ask the Lord for help. So my mother has, I'm just, I think I'm speaking a little too much, but my mother has cried a lot of tears when I was young because I was not really a very nice person. But now, because I got into sales and because I love talking and I need the orders, believe me, I talk to the Lord a lot. I won't come and preach to you, but this is what happens. And I can tell you one thing. If you can, if you can, if you're able to just throw it off and leave the pressure and leave it to God, believe me, that's how you can balance things here. Maybe, I, maybe someone can... Elaborate on that a little more. Yeah, and just to add on to the same thing, you know, I think uh, it's about how you balance it, uh, you know, and I think uh, like what John was saying, uh, spending family time is very important and having a set time, uh, whether it could be in the morning or evening, for some of us it is the evening because the morning is too much of a rush. And, uh, you know, how we prioritize what we want to do in life, you know, uh, I think we first have to give time to our family and then is work. Uh, mo most of us, I think, do, do the reverse. We spend so much of time at work uh, that we miss out on the family time. But I think we need to ensure, and I think we need to put that effort into ensuring that we cut off from work at that time that is defined by us and spend time with the family and also you know, ensure that you have sleep. Again, sleep is something that we all fight with. Uh, and if you don't have proper sleep, I've seen that it just breaks your en entire routine. Uh, you get tired, you don't become productive at work, then you bring your frustration of work into the house. Uh, being mothers, uh, you're grumbling, you're snarling, uh, you know, you're doing all of that. 
and then, you know, the entire clock goes for a toss. So I think it's important that we just prioritize, ensure that we give our family the time that is defined. And like John said, you know, I think we need to have more like a timetable set uh, till we get into that routine and it becomes a lifestyle for us. All right, we'll go to the next question. What are the practical ways to leave my work identity or image at office and switch to family or friend mode after work? Um, this is a question very relevant to me because I actually work from home and I uh, keep set uh, schedules just like in any office. Um, but then being at home, you know, you have your laptop there, you have all the software there. I mean, to come down, you know, sometimes things have to, you know, you, you are pulled back sometimes. So what I do is I depend on, you know, these are small routines, but it just helps, you know, just shutting down all the software that is open, the Illustrator or whatever it is, closing the laptop, then I get up and I, you know, on most days I go for a nice walk uh, where, you know, maybe I'm thinking or something, but then when I come back, I'm home, not at office. <laughs> that, that's what works for me. Thank you. Um, this is another question. What is the best way to accommodate time at work to commune with God? Um, I think it's uh, what I do is a very sh quick, short prayer, Lord, help me, uh, <laughs> be with me. Um, you know, there's not much time to uh, give elaborate, uh, you know, long prayers and so on. So just very short prayers. I mean, and God is faithful. Yeah. And I think uh, what you've been hearing the whole day, I think, is just the same thing that I think uh, more than it's not only just sitting and praying, but I think our lifestyle to the others, I think that is a way of how we commune with God, uh, whether it is, you know, the way we do or uh, deal with the, at our workplace, uh, you know, the character that we portray at uh, meetings that we are there when we respect people's time. I think God honors all of those little things that we do or when we give a hearing here to someone, uh, you know, because we are all in this rat race. So I think being there for someone else and just hearing them, I think God honors us even through these little acts. So you, when you lead a team that is uh, decently big, and you go for a meeting, and you're probably meeting the C-level folks of each organization because you're going and selling high-end equipment, you definitely need the Lord there. I'm sorry. Again, I'm coming back to this. And the very end, uh, probably something that nobody s seems to realize is that when you go for a meeting, you have to have favor. So the, the one of the things that I do most of the time in I said, Lord, give me favor. Because I can talk as much technology as I want. I can talk uh, uh, the most, uh, probably we can go into intellectual talk. But if you don't connect with the person you're, you're talking there, it doesn't work. You need God. You need the favor of the Lord with you. Otherwise, it's not going to work. So that's why I say, Lord, son, I say, Lord, please cloak me with favor. Give me favor when I'm talking so that whenever I say anything, it's the right thing. I said, believe me, I said a lot of prayers before I came and sat here. I'm telling you that. I said, Lord, give me favor with everyone that I'm talking to so that at least I convey the right message. And when you do that, obviously it works. I mean, you're talking to God. And we've been taught that uh, speaking to God is like talking to your dad, right? Dad, help me. So give me favor. If I smile, I should smile at the right time. All right, thank you. We're going to move to the couple section now. So managing uh, marriage and work. So one of the questions we got is, um, how do I make time for my spouse as well as ministry with busy work schedules? At times, I feel I have enough time only for one. I should. Um, 
I, I think it's um, important to have some set times, which will be a little flexible because the work pressure, the requirements might change from day to day. But broadly, there should be some understanding of when one is going to be around for different activities and so on. Um, there might be things that, uh, responsibilities where, you know, we need, both of us need to do parts of it. And uh, I think just being clear about, okay, this is, I'll take care of this, or you take care of that, or can you do this? Um, I think that helps because um, uh, with uh, children and our work schedules and things like that, um, the scheduling, it doesn't have to be very detailed. We don't use any Excel or anything. <laughs> but uh, just being very clear to the other, uh, you know, others that, okay, even to our children actually, okay, this we cannot do because I've already committed to this or don't do anything on keep Saturday free because we will do this. Um, I think that's important and uh, broadly that everybody knows what um, the others are engaged in so that, okay, maybe they will also give us a little bit of understanding if we are a little late and so on. You know. Another simple thing is, you know, can things be done together? I mean, if I'm cooking and if Ashok is just hanging around and talking, that's also family time. <laughs> it works well. <laughs> I think it's communicate and communicate and communicate. I'll add a joke to this. So the uh, most important thing in the busy work is, like Asha and Ashok mentioned, when you're working together, you know what my stress buster is? Washing the plates. I love doing that. So she'll be cooking, I'll be doing this. So, so I keep telling her, so uh, maybe if I'm going to office and I'm a little late today, just remember I sat with you, I washed the plates and we <laughs> talked. Okay? And, uh, and washing the plates, believe me, at 5 o'clock in the morning, there'll be a whole stack. It'll take at least an hour. She'll be making the coffee, I'll be washing the plates. And every time I tell her, I'm spending time with you, I'm spending time. It works, yeah. So she she appreciates that, right? So I think she's not here today, but I think she appreciates that. I think we're going to use that one at home. <laughs> uh, so there's another question. Can a comfortable lifestyle be managed with just one working spouse, or is it necessary for both to work? Uh, can it be managed? Yes, it can be managed. Uh, you have to make choices, though. Um, you may not, you know, two income is obviously a lot more than just one income. So, you know, if you have to live on one income, then you have to make choices. Uh, but a lot of things are actually free. A lot of things that are really good. So you don't have to spend money on that. Uh, for example, a nice conversation or some, you know, peaceful time at home. Uh, it doesn't cost much. So you have to make choices. You know, you uh, may not have the most recent fancy gadgets. Uh, you know, there are some choices that one has to make, but it's doable. Uh, it's not easy. And I think it's toughest in the beginning uh, when one is just starting out. Um, and then children come and there are a lot more expenses and so on. So at that time, it's the, t uh, the toughest. But if the question is about finances, um, in terms of the comfortable life part, uh, I think after you go through it, I think the journey is also very important. Um, and see God come through in your finances, that he is faithful, and so on, and um, you know, so, it's possible, but it's not the easy choice. Yeah. Rochelle, would you like to add something? Or? It's okay. Thank you. Um, is it okay for both partners to work different shifts, or do we have to have the same work and home schedules? On, on this, I'll be very, I think I'm very clear about this, that uh, uh, if you intend to have a peaceful and a happy married life, 
you have to work the same shifts. Working two different shifts has a tendency to create trouble because you will not connect with each other. So I might not be too popular with this, but I think, I really think that you need to be there together and uh, if you're not, could create a lot of trouble. I might have a little different uh, <laughs> thought to it because uh, there was a time in my, you know, when we had the kids, uh, you know, I was doing the night shift and, you know, my husband was doing the day because I had small babies and, you know, it made sense for me to do more towards the night shifts because that's when the babies were sleeping. Uh, you know, they didn't need too much of me being around them. So he could support them during the night because it would be just one feed or something like that. So for us, it did work well, but I think again, it's a personal choice as to how you would manage your home and uh, it's, uh, you know, how you want to compromise between yourself and your spouse. So for us, it did work well that, you know, I worked during the nights because I was there during the day to support them, to be around with them when they wanted me to be around them. So for, for me as a personal thing, it did work that we work different shifts. Check out the next one. So we're going to move to the parenting section now. Um, how do I cope with parenting stress and also be efficient at work? How do I cope with parenting stress and also be efficient at work? I think a lot of it also depends on the children, their ages and things like that. So, um, I mean, personally, I made the choice to be at home uh, and work. There have been uh, sets of years that I did go, but wherever I worked, I mean, I kind of made sure that I was able to come back home, um, at least at a decent time, not uh, too late. Um, I mean, why? <laughs> I, don't, I don't see that. See, I mean, parenting stress, at least maybe I'm not faced with that much. I do have a teenager at home and there is that, but I don't see how, why it should uh, affect the work per se so much because the work time is separate, right? Maybe with uh, smaller children, I don't know, I guess that. Yeah, um, actually I haven't experienced this, so really I'm, uh, <laughs> or not much of it. <laughs> I wouldn't say not at all, but, uh, uh, but I think in all this, even with children and so on, prayer is very important. Uh, asking God for his wisdom to handle different situations or, you know, issues, getting what he would want us to do in different situations rather than go in our own wisdom and understanding and sometimes even in the flesh, right? So... Uh, you know, I think praying is very important and, and prayer always is, uh, whatever the stress situation is, prayer is always helpful, so, yeah. Yeah, the answer to every problem, I guess. Um, I like this question the best. Uh, if there is a need for better parenting and childcare, who should step back from their career, the man or the woman, and why? I will leave this to her. <laughs> uh, actually, I don't have an answer that is, you know, uh, in terms of what is right and wrong in this. Um, but, um, you know, I met a, a older person who uh, both of them, uh, you know, they studied from the same college, right? And then, so both of them are MBA graduates and uh, classmates and so on. So when they got married, they decided, okay, whoever has the higher salary, uh, the other person will follow. Uh, uh, but that's, I think it's very individual and, uh, you know, in terms of choices that has to be made. So uh, I, don't, I don't think there's any right or wrong answer in this uh, and each of us have to make our own choices. I mean, this, uh, there was a couple uh, who used to come to church. The, 
the lady, the wife in question was an FPM student at uh, IIM. She just uh, finished her, FPM is the PhD program. So all this while, while she was studying, her husband actually uh, was working. Um, and it was a very hectic uh, schedule. But the agreement with, between them was that, you know, now that she's got placed and she's comfortable, she's got accommodation, everything, he is now going to take a break and he's going to take care of the child. Now, how they're going to continue it, that's a different matter. But it works, I think it's very individual and according to the family. Any different opinions or? <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Um, I don't know, so I've come from a very, I think most of us have, very orthodox background, so, and when I, when I, when I mean orthodox, uh, I'm, a, I'm actually orthodox Syrian, same as Ashok, so, so uh, <coughs> uh, I, I read in the Bible, and now, uh, before uh, Suresh, <laughs> before, before Suresh, Augustine tells me that I've backslidden or anything. Okay, because that's the comment he gave to me when I was, I believe there was this topic about uh, work is a sin and stuff like that. So, so which whatever I said was totally against everything. So, uh, I read in the Bible that a man who can't take care of his family is worth than, worse than a heathen. Right? It's somewhere there in the Bible. Don't ask me which verse, which scripture. But, um, and that's what my dad always told me. He said, if you can't take care of your family, there's no point. So if you ask me, as the leader of, or the head of the house, as my wife tells me I am, uh, 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 I believe I should take care of my family. And uh, I, I have gone through, trials that have been pretty bad, I mean, work-wise as well. And, uh, but I always used to tell her, I will somehow manage to pay the bills, right? And I went out, I worked, just to let you know, there was a point of time when I quit my job and I started a cake company on a, on a crazy fellow. I started a company uh, and uh, I was pushing my wife was so embarrassed for me, so sad. She said, you are a vice president of a company and you're going to do work like this? I said, it's fine. But I said, "You, I will do it. I ha I'm, I'm actually telling you this thing from the bottom of my heart. I have taken cupcakes in the ITPL factory. We had an outlet there. I have pushed it through the service entrance because they do not allow people to come through the main entrance. Those are for employees and workers there, right? I have pushed it through there, through the, and those are dark, dingy places that you take it, but I pushed it, I stood by the, I stood by there, I stood and I sold cakes. So why didn't try my cupcakes, sir? I've done that. And the only thing my wife told me when, when I went at home, she said, you sure you want to do that? I said, I'm doing it. I don't have a job, I need to work at this, and this is the only way I can see for doing it. So, uh, to me, that's what I feel. You know that it is up. To, I have to take care of my family. Uh, and she's very nice. She's accommodating also. <laughs> Do we have time for one more question, Noah? Sure. Yeah, this one, last one. Um, how much does it impact children when both parents work? What is an efficient way to divide childcare responsibilities when both parents are working? Anyone wants to take that? So this is if both parents are working, how do you balance it you know, with childcare responsibilities? I can tell you one thing. So, uh, so while I told you the story of the cupcake part of it, I didn't do that for very long. I did that for eight months, and I went back to work. And I dumped the whole thing on my wife. And my poor wife is running the whole business right now. 
And, uh, but I can tell you one problem that happens at home. How does it impact children, both parents are at work? So this, uh, the food business is like a, literally like a 24 cross seven work, right? You've got customers calling in at 10 o'clock in the night and saying that, uh, I want a cake tomorrow at 11 o'clock, this is the size I want, blah, 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 all that happens. Initially it was fine, my wife would take the calls. But off late what happens is the children get very angry now. And uh, they start getting annoyed with my wife and saying, why are you taking calls after six when we are at home? What has happened right now is my kids do not want to have anything to do with business. They say, mommy is always working because she has to take calls. She has to handle issues that have come up. Someone didn't come in like that, right? So this problem is there. If you don't keep that balance right, right, it affects the children. And then I probably get irritated when she's getting her calls Vice versa, when I get calls, she gets irritated, so things like that. So you've got to figure that balance out. Where is it that you can throw in that extra effort to, to, you know, to manage this, if at all you have to do it? I see the time is up, but uh, yeah. So all I, all I want to say is it's, it's a fine balance that you need to maintain if you want to do this the right way. So you can't take it to extremes at any cost. Um, between us, we, we schedule who does the dropping, who does the picking up. Hannah wants notes in some gender discrimination chapter, he will write it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, I mean, we, I think it's kind of clear cut between us because we kind of decide beforehand uh, and uh, work accordingly. But uh, essentially, I think uh, the evening time, particularly after their play, that is maybe 6.30 and after that, if we can all be at home together, uh, there's nothing like this, and not working, you know. Um, that's the best thing to do. Okay, with this we're done with this session. I'll hand it over to Brian. Thank you so much for your answers. Yes, yes. John would like to add one thing before we go. I, I just want to add one last thing, because before we go, and... Uh, I, again, I'm telling you, this is because I'm in sales, right? And I've, by God's grace, I've reached pretty senior levels now. Never be ashamed of the Lord at your workspace, right? I will just tell you one small anecdote that happened many years back when I started my career. And uh, we had to do our numbers. They asked me, what will you do for the year? Uh, my target was about that time. I'm talking about 15 to 18 years, 20 years, 25 years back, okay, very way back. The target given was about one and a half crores. He asked me, where's your funnel? Funnel means the, the orders you were expecting to close. I had about 30 lakhs of funnel to close, right? So when they asked me that question, I said, where are you going to do your one and a half crores? I, then I, I think probably naivety at that time, probably, but I said, my Jesus will provide, okay? And remember, this was, a, this was a conference where we had reviews for the whole South. With around about 50 people were there in that meeting, and I said, Jesus will provide. He provided. They laughed at me, and the next year when we had the review, same problem. Before I could say anything, they said, Jesus will provide? I said, yes. <laughs> All right? But I want to tell you one thing, that as long as you put your faith in God in work, don't be ashamed to say, okay, I'm trying to be a little diplomatic now. I said, God will provide. But recently, my mother-in-law mother, mother shouted at me and said that, why are you ashamed of saying Jesus? And she brought back that to me. So I say Jesus now a little bit in office. Okay, but I just want to say that if any of you is saying that you don't want to say the name of the Lord... Yeah.